and welcome to business as usual. Today, I got my friends Lisa and Tracy with us. Easy for me to say. We're going to talk about the the walk down Alzheimer's. Welcome to the show. Thank, Thank you yeah. so much for having us. So, uh, I want to talk a little bit about the statistics to start. Mm -hmm. uh, currently, how many Americans are living with Alzheimer's disease? Well, currently, there's over five million Americans uh, living with Alzheimer's disease. Wow, I never would have guessed that. It's huge. It's huge. And um, the, the numbers are estimated to triple by the year 2050 to about 16 million, which is just a staggering number of people. Um, currently, um, the Alzheimer's disease is the sixth leading cause of death in the United States. And um, out of the top 10, top 10 causes of death, it is number one, the only one that does not have a treatment, a cure, or prevention. That, that is amazing, because at this time there is no treatment or cure for it, right? No. No. And, you know, I'm, sadly I've known some people who've had family members who have developed Alzheimer's, and by far it's one of the worst things in the world. You know, um, it happened with my uncle, um, my, his, my aunt and uncle married forever, and he got Alzheimer's disease and he didn't know she was. And God bless that woman, she went to visit him every day. And you know, we'd say, isn't it hard? You know, because he doesn't know who you are. And she would smile and go, but I know who he is. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, and that is true love, my friend. You know, it was just amazing to me. Never broke her will. She was like, hey, I'm gonna go every day. And I'm like, you know, you're just an amazing person. But you guys must say that all the time, what families are going through that, and how it just, I know somebody that both mom and dad had it. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you know, how, how could this happen, you know, and it just the pain it causes and stuff, so. But now, um, with Alzheimer and dementia, people use those terms interchangeably. Is it, real, is it the same thing, is it something different? So it, that is a question I hear all the time. Um, you know, what is the difference between Alzheimer's and dementia? And basically, dementia is a medical term that describes certain symptoms. Um, loss of memory, functioning, reasoning, all the different cognitive and physical abilities, but it's a condition. It doesn't tell you what's causing those problems. Yep. You need an actual disease to cause it. So dementia itself is not a disease. And if you think of it almost like an umbrella term, which describes these symptoms, and then you need a disease that's causing it. And Alzheimer's disease is the most common form of dementia. There are many different types of dementias, and again, Alzheimer's is the most common. So if I were to say, I have Alzheimer's disease, I have a form of dementia. If yep. I were to say I have dementia, I may or may not have Alzheimer's disease. So let's lighten it up a little bit. Let's talk about the walk. <laughs> so when and where is the walk? So the walk is Sunday, September 18th. It's at 200 Brickstone Square in Andover. We've been there for several years. Um, we're happy to say at some point we may outgrow the space. We had close to 3,000 people last wow. year. Wow, that's it amazing. It was amazing. We were number 29 out of over 600 walks in the United States, just for the northeast part of Massachusetts. So walk me through the walk, no pun intended. <laughs> what, what's, what's the event like? It has to be really emotional. It's very emotional, um, especially if you have a personal connection. And not everybody does. They're right. there to support um, the, the disease. You know, we like to have dance troops come and entertain for a little while. We have a kids area. Um, we have vendors that come with snacks. Um, but we have speakers and there's a promise garden. And depending on if you are supporting someone with Alzheimer's or you have Alzheimer's, you get a different color flower and you can plant it in the garden, write messages on it. That's cool. It's very yeah. moving. It's so beautiful. There's this, this just sea of flowers of, of these four different colors and it's just when you, you, when you step back and actually look at the 3,000 people all holding different flowers, it's just you can't help but feel that sense of hope. Plus it so must it's... help them too, you know, just to have that sense of community because Unless you've been impacted by it or you're caring for a loved one who has it, you know, you can say, oh, I, I, no, you really don't understand. You don't understand. You know, so it must be, that must really help them too, yeah. just to be able to, you know, tell stories to other people. Mm -hmm. I have somebody who's going through it and saying, hey, all right, you know, tell me how you deal with it. Yeah. You don't feel as alone. You know there's other people there that are in the same boat. So now, how does someone go about registering for the walk? Well, there's a couple of different ways. You can um, get on our website which is alz.org slash walk, uh, or you could call the 1-800 number, which is 
9800 uh, I'm sorry, 1-800-272-3900. And you can register that way also. Now, but how about, you know, um, there's people wa watching who unfortunately have been impacted by this. Mm -hmm. And, you know, maybe it was in the past, but they want to make a donation. Can I sponsor a team or can I just make a straight donation? Absolutely. You can get on the website and make a straight donation or sponsor a team. When you, The website is really, you know, I think now these websites are, are really quite um, high tech and sure. lots of information and when people register themselves they have a participant center so they can send out emails to people and fundraise online and all of that is there and if anyone has any questions they can just call the 800 number and people will walk them through. And them. that's really powerful though because we've all received emails from, from mm -hmm. walks and things but it's when it's coming from a friend who's telling me a personal story. Yeah. It gets real really fast. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, okay, you know, this is someone I, I care about and they've gone through this. And as a good friend, I want to help them and stuff. So, and like I said, to be able to see it, you know, because there's lots of great causes out there. But when you get that email, you're like, okay, you know, excuse my friend, I want to help. Right. So it's really powerful, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, what do we do with the proceeds? Well, the, the Alzheimer's Association, you know, their mission is really to be. Um, to be focused on supporting people with the disease and their loved ones who are caring for them, um, advocating for public policy, and um, doing, being the leading um, nonprofit um, provider of grant provider of research um, for funds. And um, so the proceeds actually go to support the mission that the Alzheimer's Association is doing. They have many different programs there. I think when um, I come into contact with people and you know, there's so many resources that people just aren't aware of right now. Um, so they have support groups. People can even do online support groups if they can't get to a support group. And the support groups are for people who have the disease in the earlier stages and caregivers. Yep. Um, they have educational groups and many of them for family members are you know, at, at no charge. They have a 24-hour, seven-day-a-week helpline. Mm -hmm. So at any point, someone can call and get confidential support or resources. And these, these lines are staffed by master's level clinicians and other specialists. So that's really a nice thing for people to do. You can get a care consultation where someone will meet with you and talk to you about what's going on with your loved one and how you can um, you know, best manage their care. There's also... Um, to remember what else there is. There's so much. There's advocacy. There's over 700,000 advocates nationwide that are just kind of um, relentless in their wanting to make the changes necessary. With, with the statistics I shared with you, sure. we've got to find um, a cure and a treatment for this. So the advocates have been really um, impactful in terms of getting public policy changes. And then finally, the, the um, monies go toward the research. And as the largest um, funder for nonprofit, of uh, largest nonprofit funder for research. Uh, it's phenomenal. They've, since 1982, they, the Alzheimer's Association has given over $300 million um, wow. in amazing. research. Yeah. And I'm just going to double check that statistic. Sure. Yeah. I'm so sorry. Um, one second. But like you mentioned, Lisa, you know, one of the challenges is you just don't know about the resources out there. Because, you know, as we sit here right now, it's like, okay, no one I know, thank God, is suffering from this, but that could change tomorrow. Exactly. Yeah. You know, all of a sudden it's like, you know, why is mom and dad being so forgetful mm -hmm. in, in, in just not knowing where to turn to? And, you know, and I think some people may be in a little denial sometimes. Oh, they're just, <laughs> it's just aging, they're just slipping a little bit. Yes. Okay, you know, you're, you're being a little too naive about this, mm -hmm. but just to knowing, okay, you know, where do I turn to? And, and, and the burden that it that creates too, and, and the guilt. It's like, okay, you know, I don't want to leave mom and dad alone, but I have to work for a living, you know, so mm -hmm. now what? You know, and we want to be there, you know, to, you know, to take care of our parents. So it's just getting the support groups and knowing, hey, you know, is there programs to help mm -hmm. people? Yeah. So what typically happens, you know, someone gets diagnosed, what are some of the, the supports out there? How do they, you know, start to handle it? Because, you know, we look at it from the caregiver side, but when you think about the person, you're saying, oh my God, you know, I just been diagnosed. Um, mm -hmm. I have um, a gentleman I'm friends with from the food pantry. He comes to the food pantry and he told me 
that he's you know been diagnosed and mm -hmm. and it you know and I'm just a casual friend I mean we just met through a pantry known him for eight years but each month I see him slipping a little more and it is heartbreaking it is. you know he'll come in he'll tell me a story he'll look and come back and tell me the same story yeah. And you know, and you smile because he's my friend, and you know, and I answer the questions, and mm -hmm. I pretend I haven't heard the story for the fourth time today, Wonderful. because that's what friends <laughs> yeah. do. Yeah. But you know, you, it just—it's heartbreaking, and you know, and he'll look at me and go, "I told you that story already, right?" And I'm like, "No, no, no. I mean, I'm not gonna hurt his feelings, you know." Right. But he'll look at me and go, "Thank you." But I know I did, <laughs> you know. But it has to be obviously hard on the other side too, where you know you see that and you see that look of sadness on your loved yeah. one's face. Talk to me a little bit about how how it can help. You know, how, how do they can, get the research? Yeah, I can talk a little bit about the personal connection. My mom was diagnosed um, in 2009. We just thought it was signs of old age because right. we didn't know. Of course. We um, don't know if it was ever in any of the families. Sure. Um, we were kind of caught off guard. And my father was retired and he was covering for her a little bit, which we didn't find out until well, those ones do. many times later. Right. Um, the sense of frustration for her when on the early stages, she would know there was something wrong and she couldn't communicate it and she would say there's something wrong with my head I don't know what it is I can't fix it I know what I want to say I can't say it and she would go like this yeah. we would say you can't communicate and she said it's here so the sense of frustration um, for her it's just trying to help her understand it talk to her those moments that they are lucid and they can understand are very helpful you know, trying to teach the caregiver, or the loved one, um, certain things, put things in the same places, you know, keep a routine. There's so many things that you can do to try and help, but it is very frustrating for them. We saw it. Yeah, just to, to watch the progression, yeah. you know, is tough. Yeah, she's past that stage now. Um, we did have to put her in memory care yep. um, due to the passing of my father. And if there's one thing I do want to say is please keep an eye on the caregivers because mm -hmm. we didn't know for years yep. what was really going on behind closed doors. But it's it's very common, you know, especially, yeah. you know, um, with the older generation. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, don't upset the kids. Right. Don't tell them that, you know, when we can be a resource to help them. Yeah. You know, it's just like, hey, I'll just cover for mom or dad and just don't won't let you know yep. because we don't want to upset you. And it was the little things that mm -hmm. we didn't know was happening until we really saw it. And, you know, it, it, it's hard. It's a very hard thing. And we didn't know that there were resources. I wasn't involved then. Right. Because so. until you've been impacted, you know, you, I you, mean, who researches right. it? You know, oh, I'm going to, you right. know, look this up just in case this ever happens. Nobody does that, yeah. and that's the hot pot when all of a sudden yeah. you get diagnosed and you know, and you're going with the emotionalness of it, and right. then you're like, okay, I gotta separate my feelings, you know, as, as my wife calls it, she calls it Uncle Kev mode, when I'm yeah. like, okay, <laughs> I'm done crying now, we yeah. gotta fix it, you know? And, but that's what it is, you know, oh, okay, yeah. now I gotta, get, I gotta find every resource yeah. to make sure that I understand what I'm facing and right. what, what my loved ones are facing. But that's, that's really important, so. One of the things that is really, um, I think, important to mention is with people starting to become diagnosed earlier, there are resources now to help people live the fullest life they can. Mm -hmm. um, unique to the Massachusetts, New Hampshire Alzheimer's Association chapter is a program that they have for people in the early stages. And they get them together to socialize and, and go to different programs and really trying to, to have people have the fullest life they can despite yeah. this disease. Yep. No, definitely. So let's lighten it up again. I'm getting too emotional. <laughs> um, let's, um, let's talk about virtual walkers. Okay. <laughs> virtual walkers, that's a great thing. Um, some people have walked before and then they are, you know, they are unable to for a medical condition or they are unable to leave their loved one they're caring for and they still want to do something for this walk. So people could be a virtual walker. They can still sign up online. They can fundraise and people are really, you know, able to give to their walk that they're doing, but right. they're just not physically actually doing it and it's really a nice alternative and we're trying to get the word out about that more because that's something relatively new 
I think it's a really great idea because, you know, there may be people who have passion for it. They might not mm -hmm. just be available that day right. or, you know, maybe, you know, it's just, you know, I, I can't walk for different health reasons, yep. but, you know, I just want to, you know, get a team together and help and it makes perfect sense to me and stuff. It's kind of a cool idea, actually. It's a great idea. So, Tracy, we've heard a little bit about your story of how you got involved. Mm -hmm. What's your story? My story. Um, <laughs> that's my story. So I actually, at this point, don't have anyone in my family afflicted by this disease, and it's kind of amazing with the numbers out there. Yeah, really, a statistic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. I am, I'm a, a clinical social worker by training, and I'm an Alzheimer's specialist. And um, so I work in the field, and I've been in the field for many years, and it's, I just have such a connection with the, um, the people that I work with and the families that I, I work with. Um, and it's just it's a passion of mine to see this disease gone yep. and so um, you know Tracy and I are both volunteers with the Alzheimer's mm -hmm. Association for this walk the committee that does the walks is comprised pretty much 99.9 percent .9 um, of volunteers and so I had gotten involved with this because of my passion and I just um, the walk just brings so much hope because you're interacting with people all day all in day, your day job day. that yes. have yeah. that's going to be um, very emotionally draining honestly you know, I get to see um, I get to see the fact that there's still so much quality of life that people can have. Yeah. That, f for me, obviously there's there's days that are sad and and difficult. But I think for the most part, I feel like the people I am working with are making such a difference in people's lives yep. that it it does it gives me a sense of just um, a real sense of um, peace. I think to be able to feel like I'm I'm doing something, not just sitting by. Yep. Yeah. One question we didn't ask is how far is the walk? <laughs> well, we ask people to sign up. They find out they're walking a marathon, so, you know. So you can do one mile or three miles. Yep. Yeah, which is obviously very yeah. easy. And you like can bring your dogs. Yep. Yep. We, we have, have lots of dogs. Yes. Yep. But yep. no, just to think that maybe people might ask that question. Yes, it's a really important time, question. So. so Tracy, let's talk a little bit more about the walk. Mm -hmm. How does it impact you? Um, when I started, I got involved really with the walk about, I walked for years, but yep. I, um, I'm involved with the committee for two years. This is my second year. Um, currently, I'm the chairperson, so I jumped right in with I'll both feet. I was co-chair <laughs> yeah, yeah. co last year, yeah. this year, I, um, they asked me to, so I took it on. For me, it's therapy. Yep. Um, it's what I need that. to get through. Sure. The walk is just, it's so emotional. Um, my sister, it was the first time she came last year and she walked up and she, she cried. Mm -hmm. It's just, it, the emotional connection and the feeling is just overwhelming. I can't really but like put But like you it said, it is very therapeutic for you though too it at the same time, right? It is very therapeutic. I'm being around people who um, most of the committee like Lisa said, there are 9.9 .9 of them are volunteers, but they're also connected. Yep. Um, at least, I would say, eight out of I would think most people group. get drawn to it, it because yeah. they've been impacted or yeah. they know somebody, yeah. you know, saying, hey, you know, we want to, you know, help and stuff. So it is kind of neat and stuff. So, it is. so what's involved in, in being the, the leader of it? <laughs> what, what, is, what do you have to do? Oh, well, luckily I have a great committee of people yep. who, um, mm -hmm really don't need a whole lot of guidance, maybe a little bit of leadership, um, yep. you know, and just troubleshooting. It's making the connections, it's making sure the logistics are up to date, and we have, you know, we have goals. We have um, mm. goals that we want to meet as far as fundraising. Sure. Um, All right, what's the goal? Uh, this year it's 480000 Yep. I am looking, uh, last year we were number 29. Yep. I would love to get to number 25 this yep. year. Um, but it has to be an even 500. I mean, 480 is just a, a <laughs> number. Yeah. <laughs> no pressure or anything. But, I, mean, I, would, yeah. I would like to see it higher. Yeah, but, but, yeah, you know. but five's a better number. Yeah, actually. it's a great number. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, so. Lisa and I uh, attend some fundraising yeah. together yeah. And, and speak, and, you know, and yeah. do, we do talks at Rotary Clubs or. Yep social groups if they want to learn a little bit more. Well, that's the thing, is it, just is getting the awareness out there. Yes. Because again, you know, unless you've been impacted by it or, you know, like all things like this, it's easy to be in denial. Yeah. It's like, okay. yeah, you know, it's, it, we know it's out there, but we don't want to talk yeah. about it because we're afraid if we mention it that, you know, right. it's, it's gonna, somehow we're gonna get it. 
because we spoke about it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so it's easy to just to don't talk about that. Well, with the statistics yeah. uh, as they are. And yeah. I, I think too, the, one of the other things about the walk, it's not just for fundraising, it's the largest public awareness event right. for mm -hmm. this disease because yeah. it gives people the opportunity when you're talking to somebody and asking if they'll help you or join your team, you're talking about not only the association, but the disease and how it's impacted you or how you've seen other people impacted with it. But you have some speakers that day too? We do. We have, um, typically it's someone in the field, the healthcare field, that will talk about mm. statistics yep. and bring people up to date on what's going on. We try not to have too much speaking right, because yeah. that's not what it's about. Sure. Yeah. So. But it's still, it's nice to hear, you know, what's happening in the research mm -hmm. field. You know, right. you're out raising money, you know, it's like, okay, you know, are we getting any closer? You know, how, how's the research coming along and stuff? So I can understand why people would really want to get involved in that. So now, typically one of the questions you'll always hear in a walk is, is there a requirement to have to raise a certain amount of money to have a team, you know, any type of requirements? So there's no requirement. There's no um, minimum that people have to raise, but it is kind of expected if you're going to walk that you will do some fundraising sure. because that's what yeah. that goes toward. And so there's different incentives for different levels of fundraising yep. that people do, mm -hmm. which is great. And what's great too is on this participant center, if you've registered, there are so many tips for fundraising because I think for some people it can be a little daunting. You know, how do I yeah. ask somebody? Well, yeah. And through social media and just mm -hmm. so many different ideas, there's so many things there that kind of break down that kind of, oh, what am I going to do? <laughs> Well, I, I understand that's the hot pot because you feel like, oh, if I ask somebody, I'm putting them in an awkward spot or, you know, or then, you know, they're going to ask me for something, <laughs> you know, to, I mean, it happens, you know, it so, but I, I think that's where social media really becomes powerful in something mm -hmm. like this is being able to go out and, and you know, just share your page. So right. it's a, it's a much softer touch Absolutely. saying, Hey guys, you know, I've been impacted by this or, you know, I'm, I'm a big supporter, you know, would you guys mind making a donation? So then you can jump on and make that donation without the, you know, picking up the phone and calling somebody saying, right. you know, Hey, you know, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. you know, do you have some money for me today and stuff? But it, you know, again, it just, I think that's where it really helps. And yeah. just for me, my thing is, is the personal stories, right. you know, because we all get asked for donations for lots of different things. Yes. But when you see that personal story, okay, you know, then it, it makes a big difference and stuff. Yeah. So um, again, so when and where is the event? So the event is Sunday, September 18th. Uh, registration starts at 8.30. The event starts with speakers and dance troops and so forth at nine, uh, 200 Brickstone Square in Andover. It's right off of 133. Yeah, it's easy to find. Very easy, easy to find. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yep. And we'd love to have as many people if they want to participate. So I guess, but then again, I um, just want to touch on the virtual um, walker mm -hmm. again. Yes. You know, if you happen to be away that weekend or there's a reason mm -hmm. you can't walk, you can um, become a virtual walker and you can right. invite your friends to be on your virtual team. Absolutely. Absolutely. Which is just a kind of, it, it is, it's just a cool concept and yeah. stuff where, you know, we might have people who, you know, are our friends who want to support us, but maybe they're not local. Right. So it's like, okay, you know, if you can't, you know, make it over to Andover because you live across the country, well, you can sign up and, you know, and be, be a walker, which is even better, you know, I, you know, it's great, hey, if you want to support my team, thank you. <laughs> but more importantly, you know, join it as a walker, you know, yes. so you can reach out to your friends for donations right. too, and kind of builds this up and stuff. So. Yeah. It really uh, makes it makes it an interesting day and stuff. And now again, the proceeds get used for the research, right? They right. get used for the research and all of the supports that the Alzheimer's Association gives for people and education. But it's got to be amazing to watch like people with their team shirts on oh. and oh. things like that. Because I've been involved in a similar walk yeah. and um, as a volunteer, and I really didn't get it until I got there. And, you know, and I'm like this the whole day. I'm like, don't look because, <laughs> you know, you see people, you know, with design shirts on, you yeah, know, you see the emotion of it. You're like, yeah. stop so making eye contact with them. People in wheelchairs. Yeah. You yeah, know, it walking, just, yeah. you're like, oh my God, you know, but you see, like you said, you know, they, you know, they have somebody who's maybe yeah. suffering and they have the, their entire team surrounding them. Right. That's really, really powerful. It's very powerful. Yeah. So, um, you got your own team already? I do have a team. Um, we have one at work, but I also have a personal team. Yep. I work with two other ladies who mom, their moms are also affected. Um, 
we found out just by talking one day after a meeting, and we've really shared a, a special bond. It, it does. It, it brings you connection at, at just a unique level because yeah. it's not something that we talk about in general, right. you know, where a lot of times you just don't know. And unfortunately, someone passes and like, oh, yeah, you know, that. Mm -hmm. You're like, yeah. but I've known you forever, you know, right. and you never mentioned that. Well, you know, I didn't want you to you know, yeah. feel bad for me, exactly. you know, so we just kind of suffer in silence and stuff. Yeah. And like I said, <laughs> it's just a good day for the caretakers, too. It is, because absolutely. you know sometimes you know we forget you know uh, as you've seen in your life mm -hmm. what it's like to be that caretaker yeah. and that you know obviously is a big day and stuff so um, and like I said there's no minimum requirements please yeah. do the best you can mm -hmm. but obviously we're trying to get as many walkers as we can yes. out there and stuff and we you, you make it um, so it's a good day for people too absolutely. there's lots of stuff it's going fun. on it's yeah fun. And, and which helps mm -hmm. because you know like I said you know people are suffering from this but to be able to come together as a community right. you know interact with each other and like I said have a, just a little bit of fun for a couple of minutes yeah. is kind of neat and stuff so um, last time when and where's to walk in and more importantly how do they register so um, they, can, <laughs> <laughs> they can either register on the walk website which yep. is alz www.alz.org slash walk yep or they can call that 1-800 number again which is 1-800 it's okay, <laughs> you got it. I didn't um, know. 1-800-272-3900. But it's really important to register early, you yes. know, to not to try to register that day or anything, right? right? When you register, the earlier you register, the more time you have to really make connections and fundraise with sure, people. Sure, yeah. And as I said, just being able to share that page and stuff, and just to encourage people, you know, to, to utilize social media, yes. you know, yes. and, and to tell people your story because, mm -hmm. you know, people want to help, you know, they, yeah. you know, as, as your friend, they're willing to, you know, uh, be, you'll be surprised when you ask how many people will join your yeah. team. Yeah. Or as you mentioned, you know, with your coworkers, where right. you happen to mention it and you're like, you too. Yeah. You know, I, I'm going through it yeah. too and stuff. So as you do that, you know, people now you connect at a different level, and you may be surprised how many people want to join your team. Because yeah. sometimes people are like, well, I want to walk, but you know, I want to walk with my friends, mm -hmm. and I don't know how to ask and stuff. Well, yeah. you know, just share your story. It's the easiest way. So with five million people diagnosed. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's not uncommon to meet someone who's in the same sure. boat as you are. Absolutely. So. Well, simple as that, guys. We're out of time. Mm -hmm. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.